President Trump's agenda faces new challenges tonight, from China to Russia to his own cabinet. On trade, the president overnight ordered the U.S. trade representative to consider $100 billion in new tariffs on Chinese goods. That is on top of recent levies on steel and aluminum, and another $50 billion in proposed penalties. Still, White House economic advisor Larry Kudlow counseled calm today in remarks to reporters. Now, we're not running a trade war. If you read this thing, you'll see this is just a proposed idea which will be vetted by USTR and then open for public comment. So nothing's happened. Nothing's been executed. I read about how evidence. There's no there there yet, but there will be. Separately, Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin said there is the potential for a trade war, but he added, we are absolutely willing to negotiate. The uncertainty sent major stock indexes down more than 2 percent. The Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 572 points to close at 23,932. The Nasdaq fell 161 points and the S&P 500 sank 58. On another front, the Trump administration announced new sanctions to punish Russia. The targets are 24 Russian government officials and tycoons. The White House blamed what it called Russia's malign activity around the world. All this as the president is pondering the fate of EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt tonight. He is under fire over a low-cost condo rental, big pay raises for his aides, and pricey travel. Today, Mr. Trump tweeted that Pruitt is, quote, doing a great job, but is totally under siege. Later, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders echoed the support, but said an ethics review is ongoing. The president uh, feels that the administrator has done a good job at EPA. He's restored it back to its original purpose of protecting the environment. It's gotten unnecessary regulations out of the way, uh, and we're continuing to review uh, any of the concerns that we have. And I'll keep you posted if there's anything, if there's anything further on that front. This was also H.R. McMaster's last day as the president's national security advisor. Mr. Trump removed him over policy and personality differences. Hundreds of staffers applauded McMaster today as he left the White House with his wife. Former U.N. Ambassador John Bolton will become the third person to hold the job starting on Monday. And now to try to put some of the president's week in context, our White House correspondent Yamish Alcindor is here with me. Yamish. So first, Scott Pruitt. Where do things stand with him? The president continues to defend him. Is that right? If that is right. And currently, Scott Pruitt is still in his job. But the Trump White House has shown that things could change really quickly. That said, President Trump has said that he's doing a fantastic job. Um, the, the Associated Press reports today that the two men met. Scott Pruitt met to lead, to uh, essentially lay out why he should keep his job. Part of the reason why he and both and President Trump say that he's doing a good job at the EPA is because he's getting regulations, he's taking away regulations, he's changing environmental policy, and he's seen as someone who's being successful in his job. That said, the White House outside of President Trump has been a little bit less less um, laudatory. Uh, Sarah Sanders said today that there's still an investigation into Scott Pruitt's um, behavior. And Chief of Staff John Kelly, um, according to several reports, has told President Trump that he should fire Scott Pruitt, but the president is not taking um, his advice right now. In fact, that's been reported prominently and a lot of comment on that uh, about whether the relationship between the president and his chief of staff. So, Yamish, there were several other things going on today. We, we reported uh, the administration announces these new sanctions against Russian oligarchs. Why are they doing this now? What is the overall stance they have toward Russia? Well, the overall stance that they had toward Russia today is really an all-out um, messaging, messaging platform. They wanted to really hammer home the point that they think that, that Russia has been engaged in troubling behavior. Uh, the day started with an 8 a.m. phone call with senior administration officials telling me and other reporters that, that these sanctions against 24 Russian officials were because of a number of um, activities, including... 
undermining Western democracies, but also carrying out cyber attacks. They then they then released a memo, a White House memo, saying that the that Russia's behavior was both destabilizing and malicious. Um, and then Sarah Sanders went to the White House press briefing today, and she said that Russia really needs to change its behavior. All that is happening as President Trump continues to be criticized about how he talks about Vladimir Putin. But it's really important to point out that the people that are being sanctioned are really, really close to Vladimir Putin. So there is actual things that are going on. There are some teeth behind this. But in, in many ways, a contrast with what we've seen before from the administration toward Russia. So finally, Yamish, uh, these tough words toward China on trade. The president late last night or the White House announcing we are thinking about uh, imposing new taxes on China in addition to what they've already announced. What is going on there, and how do you, how do you understand what what the administration posture is? The administration's posture is that they want to they want to get into this war of words with with China, and neither country is backing down. And as a result, as you pointed out, that you have the markets that are really rattled. Um, some of the places that were really hurt today were tech companies and banks, um, seeing their their stocks fall. The other thing that's important here is that President Trump ran on this idea that he wanted to be tough and he wanted to to to, to have these kind of trade conversations um, but he's laid out that he also thinks that Americans might feel a little pain while Steve Mnuchin has said that there might be a trade war um, and, and Larry Kudlow is saying well we don't really want that today at the White House he already kind of laid out this slogan that I'm imagining White House officials might use which is blame try which is blame China not Trump you can already kind of see that on t-shirts you can already kind of see that in messaging so this is the White House that is gearing up for what might be having explained to Americans why they're paying more or why they're losing money. But meantime, as we said, the uh, financial markets rattled yeah. by all this because of mixed signals. Yeah, there's a, lot of mi there's a lot of mixed, mixed signals going on. But the thing that is pretty clear is that President Trump seems to be very serious about the fact that he wants to have these tariffs and that China is saying that, you know what, if you do that, we're not going to back down and we're going to we're going to essentially um, have things against you and we're going to pass our own sorts of policies to hurt to hurt Americans. And it's key to point out that some of the people that would be hurt, of course, as we've laid out on this show, are farmers and soybean um, farmers and people who really backed Trump and really had this idea that, that he was going to usher in this new wave of America that was going to be prosperous. Um, and what we're seeing now is, is, is could be really, really destabilizing. And both economically and politically. Yamiche Alcinder, thanks very much. Thanks.